That is T-Mobile right behind me. Let me turn this camera around. That right there is the set that we're working on. Now I'm gonna turn this around to a street. I want you to see a street. In fact, there's a red car coming down it right now. Use that red car, stand by. All right, so I was working on this set. Cody Gumbridge pulls up, jumps out of a car. We're live. We got an audience around us. And this guy's a main carter of UFC 300. We are bringing all sorts of attention from fans for UFC 300. So imagine what this is like when he gets out of the car. He comes over and he said, what's up fellas? He comes over and he starts giving me the business. He's yelling at me because I said his name wrong. And he's saying, you gotta get my name right. Oh yeah, no, you got it. Like, consider that done. You jump out of a moving car at 80 degrees, you go through a crowd to tell me to say your name right on live television, you win. Like, consider that done, Gumbridge. And I happen to be working with Anthony Smith. It was just a funny moment, right? It turns out he and Anthony are teammates or even training partners. More likely than not, he got out of the car because he saw Anthony and came over to say hi, and I was an afterthought. But either way, this is the way that it happened. And Anthony tells me, he says, you know, uh, Cody's the hardest round that I have. I said, really? He goes, oh, he's great. I said, really? You're not just saying that. Now, we're on a commercial break at this point when Anthony starts telling me this. He says, oh, yeah. He said, uh, if Bo Nickel was to come to practice and work out in our practice room with Cody, Bo Nickel would get whitewashed. Now, I got to tell you, I don't fully know that explanation of whitewash but i know that means that he's saying cody would dominate him okay so i said are you telling me this is a harder fight than people know are you telling me this is a good bet and anthony said ah no there's always competition issues he said and you know but if cody can overcome if he can go out there and just do what he does every day and i know that sounds simple but as an athlete it's a very hard thing to do believe it or not he said, in that case, yes, he could pull the biggest upset in UFC history. And I only bring that to you because, I mean, what a story that would be. And all the big upsets that we've ever had, it wouldn't matter if it was Buster Douglas and Mike Tyson. It wouldn't matter if it was the, the race where Michael Phelps got beat by a stroke at the last second in the Olympic Games. Every upset has some similarities within the ingredients. But first and foremost, for it to be an upset, it just has to mean something that we're not expecting. It doesn't mean great performance. It doesn't mean great knockout. It doesn't mean great finish. It means a great knockout or a great finish or a great decision in a contest that we were not expecting to go that way. So I just thought I would share that with you. I mean, I'm trying to shine Cody a little bit, right? I respect that he jumped out, pulled out, wanted to make sure the Gumbridge got uh, said correctly, and I'm not doing Cody Gumbridge. I'm going to get it down. Gumbridge, it's not easy. You got Gumbridge, Gumbridge. It's, it's not easy. I know who Cody is. I know who Cody is. And now, hopefully a little bit more than before you tuned in, you know who he is too.